Got knocked around in a real small town They poked and they prodded And marched me around For a laugh in the snow Try to tear a good man's soul Welcome back to the Texas music scene. You know, the damn quails found a great mentor and collaborator in Mike McClure. Here now are co-frontmen Brian White and Gabriel Marshall with a backstage conversation on the McClure-produced album, Down the Hatch. The blood's thick, the water's deeper, the wine works fine, but the whiskey's cheaper. I turn it around, a quick before your sun goes down. The blood is thick, but water's deeper. Wine works fine, whiskey's cheaper, that's brilliant. It's one of the reasons that, uh, that we started playing together, actually, was uh, we'd known each other forever, but I just really liked that line. Mm -hmm. Like, it was really strong. I was like, hey, man, let's, let's do this thing together, see what happens. How's it well? The old saying, you know, practice makes perfect. We all practiced together. Uh, even though we were in front of an audience and even though it was on a stage, you know, that was us honing our craft and practicing. So when, when we were offered this uh, chance of a lifetime with, uh, to work with uh, Chance Sparkman and Mike McClure, like, you know, we were ready for it. And I, I think that really shows with the response that we got, that we put in the work. McClure's brilliant, one of my favorite songwriters, um, but as well as like the producing thing. And uh, he's partnered up with Joe Hardy out of Houston, who has worked with everybody from ZZ Top to Steve Earle, who actually did the mixing master on our CD. Yeah, Max uh, got a definite style to him. And when we get in the studio, uh, we have all our guys lay down our stuff. And then Mac will tell us, you know, like, hey, why don't you, why don't you try this? Which means, man, that sucked to do it over again. Uh, but he's very cool about it, um, very genuine, but uh, also very, you know, almost coy in the way that he goes about telling you that you've messed up, you know? But he makes you work, too, and he makes you yeah. think about what you're doing. And, like, I think that's the important part is, yeah. like, he really got the best out of us, I think, on that record. We spent a lot of time recording the record down at the Boo Hatch, uh, at 8 Oklahoma, Mike's studio. You know, he was really, uh, really easy about letting us do what we wanted to do at the time we wanted to do it and didn't rush us into to anything else that we weren't necessarily ready for. So we got to build the songs from the ground up, uh, you know, in a way that was comfortable for us. Yeah, it, it, the entire time, putting our mind at ease, but, but, but like Brian said, also making us work. He lives in a place, like a part of Ada that, you know, Ada's got like an old downtown and you feel like you're in town and then you drive about a half mile off of the, you know, the main road and then it's all of a sudden you're in Jurassic Park with chickens. Yeah. You know, and it's it's just a real cool place, man. His basement's real dark. Uh, he's got a bunch of weird memorabilia hanging around, guitars on the wall. And you pull up to this to this place, and uh, like he said, it's in the basement. You're going through the garage, and um, as soon as you pull up, you look over here to the left side, and there's a, a chicken coop with big, all the different kinds big of birds. chicken coop. Like, and then you know, you look over here, and there's like this creek, and um, it's a little like Animal Farm. But <laughs> yeah. just, it's just nuts. But we, you know, we had a really good time, man. And uh, you know, I've worked on records before where it just feels like God, oh, it's like pulling teeth, uh, and it, you know, that was was not like that at all. This was a real easy deal for us. Pray to the waves, who have so much to show you, but nothing to say. California Open Invitation uh, was one of the tunes on the record that, um, especially as a band playing live, is one of, one of my favorites uh, of the night, just because it's a real, uh, it builds up uh, from a real soft kind Very of a powerful. waltzy ballad into a real big powerful, like, punch you in the face kind of thing. People have really taken to it, uh, and I'm kind of a sucker for a waltz anyway. The song Down, um, it's, a, it's a gospel song that I wrote um, while hanging out with my parents one day. Um, after church on a Sunday. I'm going down, going down, down, down. Not even on bottom floor, solid down. And it kind of came out of just uh, this longing for whatever comes next, um, which is kind of weird because I wrote it when I was probably about 20 years old. It's kind of young to be thinking about, you know, what comes next, but I toured around to the, uh, the region with my parents in like a gospel quartet singing from the time I was about 13 until 16 or 17. So it just kind of reminds me of, uh, of that time. And also it's got just a really strong message of like, you know, we're all gonna get down sometime, um, but there's gonna be something better. No matter what your belief is, there's gonna be something better at the end of the line, so. We've had the, the pleasure of playing with a bunch of guys and we, you know, 
been listening to for years. He did the uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard radio show down in, in Green, and uh, afterwards he told me that um, <clears throat> he really enjoyed the CD and that it was his, you know, one of his favorite CDs at the time. And to hear that from somebody that you've listened to your whole life is, uh, you know, it, you, you can't describe it. it just makes you blush. Is and, a yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the response from our peers has been great, um, and you really realize how much people support each other. There's no jealousy. There's, you know, there's none of that catty stuff. Um, so it's been great, but it's also great that, you know, the people across the country that, you know, dig it as well. I wouldn't be anywhere without the fame. Yeah.